Hello and welcome to this second video in this series of Java Intermediate Programming. So in the last tutorial we looked at the basic syntax for classes and objects and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at things called constructors. Now I'll show you what those are in a second but first of all we're going to create a new class in its own file. So if we right click the package we're working with go to new Java class then we can make we can call it whatever we want. Let's do the coordinate example again. We can remove the generated comments so now we have a brand new class called coordinate. So much like last time, we're going to give it integer variables x, y, and z. And we saw from the last tutorial, if we go ahead and quickly make a new coordinate, we can call the uh, variable that we declared to be a coordinate object, and we can use the uh, full stop and access the variables within it. And we were setting values by going coordinate.x equals 10 and coordinate.y equals whatever. But there is an easy way to assign initial values to an object, especially if the object you know is going to rely on those values. In this case, a coordinate. A coordinate will always need an x, y, z. So these should be declared at the start. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a thing called a constructor. A constructor is similar to a method in terms of the syntax, except we don't give it a return type. Now, in a classic method, it would look something like this. We would have public void, for example. Then we would have set x, then we could do the parameters, and then set the x value somewhere in here. With a constructor, we're not gonna have any return type here in, in that one I just did, void, for example. We're not gonna have that return type. We're simply just gonna name, we're gonna write the word public, then we're going to write the name of the class, in this case, coordinate. Then we can do open and close parentheses, and then open and close the curly braces. Now this is our constructor set up. It looks like a method without the return type, and it has to be named the same as the class. So what can we do with this constructor? Well, we can put values inside here, inside these parentheses, and these values will need to be fed in to the object when you create it here. That's what these parentheses are for here. These are for constructor arguments. So when you call new coordinate, it not only creates a new instance of this object and stores it in this variable, it also calls this constructor method here when it started. So we're gonna go ahead and set the values for x, y, and z. So we're gonna require the user to pass in an x variable, y variable, and a z variable. We're all integers we're working with at this point. So now you can see an error has popped up over here. We've got invalid arguments because the coordinate requires the x, y, and z. So inside of this constructor here, how do we set these variables equal to these variables here? Because we've named them the same thing, the local variables will take precedence over the other ones. So if we try to do x equals x, you'll see that we're just assigning this variable to itself. How are we going to access these ones outside here? Well, there's a keyword in Java called this, and this refers to the pretty much the class that you're working in, in terms of when you're working inside methods within a class, the this keyword will refer to the class in its entirety. So if we put a full stop now, we can see we can access all the variables and methods of the class we're working in. So you can see this x, y, z variables are the ones up here. So we're going to go ahead and write this dot x equals x. And now we've got, we are able to assign our global x variable to this local x variable here. All we've got to remember is we have to put this keyword first. So we're going to go ahead and do the same with y. This dot y equals y and this dot z equals z. So now what our constructor is doing is we require the user to feed an x, y, z variable into the constructor and then we simply set the global variable x, y, z using the this keyword and then set it to, and I just noticed I put x again, there we go, we've set it to the global x to the local x that they passed in, the global y to the local y we passed in and the global z to that local z we passed in. So if we hop back to where we declare our class over here, uh, declare our object, sorry, um, you'll see we've got this error here. And we can press, I'm in NetBeans, I'm not sure shortcuts for other IDEs, but if you press some um, control and space, you'll see that 
it's giving us this hint here. These are the variables we need to pass in to this constructor, to this object. So you'll see it comes up x, y, z. We can just put 10, 20, 30, whatever values. So let's go over this again quickly. We're declaring our variable type to be coordinate then we're setting it equal to a new coordinate object. Now calling new coordinate doesn't just create a new instance of the object, it also calls the constructor, this constructor method here, if there is one. In this case, there's only one constructor method we've made and it requires an x, y, z variable, which we are feeding in here, just flat values, 10, 20, 30. Then those are passed in as these x, y, z variables, which we then proceed to set these global variables to. Now, if we go down slightly, we're going to do a system out print line, and we're going to print these corner.x, then just concatenate some commas to make it look nicer. Corner.x, corner.y, and corner.z. Now, you'll see when we print this out, we're going to get 10, 20, 30. Oh, I didn't mean to build it there, I meant to just run it. Oh, and let's run the individual file because it's still set to the uh, first tutorial's main class. Okay, so when we right click and run this file here, you'll see that we've got the 10, 20, 30. And that's pretty much it for constructors for this tutorial. On an unrelated note though, I'm gonna show you some of the built-in methods that objects in Java have this is going to be advantageous because you're going to need, you're going to want to use a lot of these built-in methods later on. So you see if I write uh, coordinate, just uh, call upon this coordinate object we have. Uh, when I put the full stop there, you'll see we've got the variables we declared, but you've also got all these methods here, which you probably haven't seen before. Now these methods are all methods of, you can see here, java.lang object. All objects in Java effectively have this object class as a parent, which means you can use all of these methods that it provides. Now, you can either leave them to do the default functionality that they do, which is advisable for a lot of them, such as maybe equals get class, definitely. So I'm going to show you how to use one of those methods. That's toString. ToString is probably the one that you're going to be overriding the most. So let's go into the coordinate class here and we're going to make a few line breaks and we're going to override this to string method. So we just simply write the name of the method. It returns a string in this case. So public string to string. Uh, we make sure it matches the same na method name exactly. To string. And you'll see that if we hover over it, we've got this uh, warning and it says add uh, override annotation. This isn't required, but it is convention in Java to add this annotation to methods that you're overriding. So you simply put above, just above the line where you're declaring the method, you just put at the at symbol and then override. Uh, so we're overriding this default object method in Java. But what it does, it basically just returns a string value which is representative of this object and it can pretty much be whatever you want it to be. So in this case we're just going to return string. We're going to return the coordinates in a nice readable form. So we'll put a bracket first of all, then we'll concatenate on the x value. We don't need to write this dot x in this instance because there's no local variables taking precedence over the global ones. So we can remove that this keyword. Then we'll concatenate on a comma, then plus y, then another comma, plus z, and then a closing bracket. So you can see that we're returning this string in a nice readable form. We've opened the bracket, we've put the x value, comma, y value, comma, z value, and then closed the bracket. That's basically what the two string method does. You override it, and then you return a string that's representative of the class you're using. In this case, for coordinate, it's appropriate just to return simply the coordinates. So if we go back to this class here, we can now uh, system.out.println, we can call a coordinate, and then we can call this toString method that we've overridden. So when we run this now, you'll see that we get, it we print out the string that it returned. So the 10, 20, 30, 
in the parentheses. 